So in today's episode, I'm taking some flat stock like this, some quarter inch flat stock, and I'm making this guy, which is an angle jig, which will help me to basically, it's a tool that will help me to line up pieces of material like so, and like so, and then weld them together. So that's what we're doing today on Hoopty Doodle. We went out and got a TIG welder, so now I am have the joy of learning how to TIG weld. So today is a project partly to learn how to TIG weld, some practice TIG welding, and also we want to make a functional tool. We're going to make a tool today. Yeah. So I've got some flat stock here, my TIG torch, and I'm going to cut this stuff up. Hold on. I've also got some squares here, some magnetic squares. I've also got plenty of other angle squares and whatnot. Like this guy, in order to test this thing out and make sure we're on the right track. So first thing, I'm gonna make these at seven, seven inches is what they're gonna be at. Let's cut these to seven inches. So I've got an adjustable square here. I'm actually gonna adjust this out to seven inches. And we'll use this to mark our, our lengths. Line up just about like that. So there's one. All right, so my basic premise here, I've got the two pieces of seven inch cut out. I want these to essentially be like this, but we want them spaced. I'm gonna gap in here about one and a half inches. So that if I say, hey, this isn't one and a half inch, but if I had a pipe, I could stick it in here and then had another pipe that I could stick in here like this. And I could weld these guys together, you know. Come with a clamp, clamp it in, clamp this guy in, and then weld that in without the magnet in there. But that's the general idea. That's what we're trying to make today. But I think before I can do anything here, I need to put the bottoms on these. So I need to cut another piece out, sort of making like an angle iron. I've got two more pieces cut out right here, and I've got these. I cut them to six inches just because it made efficient use of this 26 inch piece of flat sock I've got. So I could use out of one, one of these flat sock pieces, I could make all of this. So that's why I did that. I'm still gonna need to be able to cut out a piece that goes right in here to sort of reinforce everything. But this is a general idea. I need to go ahead, take these apart now and actually weld these on the very bottom so that I have like a good 90 sort of angle iron situation going on here. That's the plan with this guy. So to do that, I'm gonna do, I am also going to use this little magnet and put these together like so. I need to mark where I want it to be, where I want it to end up on this guy. So I'm gonna space this exactly like half an inch from the edge there, because then it should be exactly in the middle. So go ahead and mark this one. Mark the other one, too, over at it. All right, so these are both marked. And then I can go ahead and weld this together. But first, I gotta clean these edges up and stuff so that it can actually be welded together. And I'm probably, I'm only gonna weld on this outside seam. I'm gonna go ahead and bevel this stuff here to give me a little bit of material to go in, fill in, and connect these two. And then uh, I'm gonna weld only on this one side, not on the inside, so this will be a nice 90. I don't have any filler material in there. I'm go ahead and just put like a 45 degree angle on here, basically. So the idea is to fill that in with weld material and then I've got it cleaned up on the edge here so that that will weld as well, nice and cleanly. And then the other half of it is this guy. So I want to clean up this edge here and this edge here. All right, so now I need to get these guys together. Thank you. 
Oh, that's horrible. All right, now we've got our two little angle iron pieces, basically. And now we've got to figure out how we're going to attach them together. All right, so now we've got this stuff set up the way we want. The welding is absolutely horrible on this. My next step, I've got this set up like this. And I need to cut out a little piece that goes in between here. And basically, I'm just going to cut out a square from this stuff so that it will fit in approximately like so. I can weld it there, weld it there, and then it's essentially done. All right, so I'm using my little adjustable square here to measure how wide this guy is, and then I'm going to turn it around and like use it like this to mark it, and I should have a square at that point. All right, I'm going to go ahead and cut this guy out. All right, now we've got our little connection there. I'm going to go ahead and bevel and clean this up for welding. All right, so here's our semi-completed, mocked up at least, angle jig. And so when I'm going to weld this, I had some issues. I was getting a whole lot of porosity. You can see how porous, and it looks like bugs have been eating that. This is an exercise in learning how to take welds. So this is like, this is quarter inch material. And it is the first time I've welded anything this thick. I should have done a test weld on, on a piece of quarter inch material to make sure my settings were correct. But you know, I'm a... I'm a cavalier kind of guy, so I just went for it. I wasn't sure what this was, but yeah, it's, I should be able to remedy this by increasing the gas flow. I'm gonna try that and see if I can make this any better. My gas flow rate was around 10 or 12. I'm gonna increase it to like 15 or 20. That's where it is now. Is it about 15 now? I'm gonna bump it up and see how that goes. That made it better. That made it a lot better. I kind of wandered a little bit on my well there, but you can see how that I was able to, where I did get it, where I did do the welding, it smoothed it out very nicely. So that was it, the argon. Boom, lesson learned. Lesson learned from the day, which is part of the point of trying this stuff. So here it is in action, holding two pieces of pipe together just the way you'd hope. So I always like to learn new things and I'm always trying new stuff as a result of that. And so today I'm trying my hand at TIG welding. I have been trying my hand at little pieces of scrap metal already, so I kind of cheated on this one. But today was the first time I tried to do some welding on quarter inch, which is the thickest material I've tried to TIG weld on. And I had some issues and what I learned today was the porosity is an issue and porosity you get from low to little gas flow. So I had to bump my gas flow from like 10 or 12 cubic feet per hour to like 25 cubic feet per hour, which is pretty high, I think, in terms of the TIG welding world. But lesson learned there. And also, I, it seems, I'm not sure I haven't verified this by looking it up anywhere else, but it seems like also, once you get porosity, it's hard to correct that. Even when I had corrected my gas flow and on raw material it would looked real nice and clean on the when I went back on the porous material to try and clean that up again it just it kept it, the porosity wouldn't quite go away it was difficult I was able to improve it a little bit though so anyways learned a lot and it's definitely going to be a strong enough weld for those right angle jigs that we made and that's the value in doing these sorts of little training exercises on things that aren't structurally important you know Hopefully you had fun watching me make this jig. It's a cool tool. I'm gonna to use it in a future project to make, I've, because we have a TIG welder, I need a TIG welding cart now because you know I'm a fancy like that. Actually, I'm just functional and I really like to have things as functional as possible. And so it needs a cart so it can roll around and everything can be organized. And so we're gonna use our little angle jig to help us quickly, hopefully it'll be quicker, to set up the, the angles and stuff to make the cart because there'll be a lot of right angles in making a cart. So we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching this episode and keep on wrenching everybody.